Hi, so I'm filming this after the clip that you're gonna see for the rest of the video. Main reason being that I am filming with my Canon camera, which does not really show a vertical view of the dress and in other future sewing projects uh, because it's, it's shaped like that. So in order to give you a shot in the video of the dress like this so that you can see it at full length, um, I'm filming this first clip with my phone and also to mention some things that I forgot to mention in the uh, video that I had shot first. So you will see a more well-defined uh, footage slash clip in this video of the dress, but I just wanted to add this in at the beginning. So um, the skirt is pleated with accordion pleats. And the piece of lace here that is lowest on the waistline is covering the seam line that joins the skirt and the waist of the dress together. I also do not have a hem going on at the bottom of the skirt of the dress. The main reason being, as you can see, this lace has a lot of perforation in it, which is just a fancy way of saying it has holes in the design. So trying to hem it would make it kind of difficult. And when I was wearing it, it got caught on stuff. <laughs> so um, if I did dedicate the time to hemming it, it wouldn't really matter in the end because it's going to get snagged on a bunch of things either way. And since this is a spooky kind of dress, having the end of the skirt be a little tattered sort of fits the aesthetic anyway, so I made the decision to leave it as it is. So I think that's everything that I didn't mention in the first clip that I filmed. Um, but just to add, the editing I also have to do on my phone because my laptop overheats really easily. So for the videos, once again, I said this in the original clip that you're about to see, I am a beginner with YouTube content and the fact that my laptop is giving me problems means that uh, not only am I going to have to edit on my phone, but because my Canon camera cannot uh, take clips of projects that show you the length of the projects like this, because if I wanted to try to do that, I would have to back up the camera stand, which I can't because if I back it up any further, I will hit my bed frame. So not only am I editing on my phone, but I will have to also take clips of said projects with my phone to show you more shots of this project and other future projects and videos. So you will still get clips shot with the Canon that are more well-defined than the footage that I get with my phone, but I will have to put in clips with my phone to show you vertical views like this. So please excuse that. As I keep saying, I'm a beginner, so please go easy on me and I'm, I'm still learning. So I'm going to edit this video and the thumbnail to the best of my ability, but um, it's still not gonna look super professional just because I don't have those skills yet. Hi everyone, so in this video, as you saw from the title and the thumbnail, I am going to be showing you the Lily Munster dress that I made last year in 2022. It was my Halloween costume and at the time I just was not ready to start filming for YouTube. Um, and it, it would have been more relevant last year because of the whole Rob Zombie uh, zo um, Monsters movie that came out, <laughs> having trouble speaking. Um, speaking of speaking, I'm using the internal microphone in my Canon camera because the external camera that I was going to use is not working for a couple reasons and I need to get that checked out. So um, for the first handful of videos, at least on this channel, I'm just going to use the built-in microphone and uh, I'm just going to deal with it. So, as you can see from the Lily Munster dress that I made, unlike the original, the sleeves are made of black fabric. The camera doesn't show it, but it is a velvet fabric. 
The reason why I used it was because I already had it in my stash and I knew that it would look nice. Where the original dress had a sort of ribbon-like trim around the waist here uh, and leading down to the little tie-up on the dress, I used some lace from my sewing collection that I have, my little stash, because I knew that I would have enough. And for the tie-up, I used more of that velvet fabric. Now, there is a lace-up detail in the back of the dress that I will show you in just a minute. When it comes to the neckline, the original dress also had a neckline where there were two separate trims uh, put around the neck, one on top of the other. So I sort of mimicked that by having some of the lace go on top of that velvet. Now I know the bat is sort of the centerpiece and that you guys want to hear what that's about. I'm going to leave that for last. So when it comes to the sleeves, and I'm just going to show you actually. So as you can see, the sleeves has points on it to give it that bat-like appearance that the original dress uh, had. And, um, sorry, just want to give you a little bit more of a view on the dress here. Now, one of my issues with the sleeves and those points was they're not as well defined as on the original, but I came out of it happy enough with how it turned out that I just decided um, I'm going to leave it as is. So let's take a look at the back. So the back has a sort of uh, lace-up detail. Now, there is a bow on the top. Let me move that just so you can see. So there is a lace-up. There's a few loops and uh, with those loops, the cord that wraps around to the front to that tie-up that loosely sits there is the same piece of really long cord that I made out of that velvet fabric that goes through all these loops here and then ties but because it ties up and then goes to the front it doesn't look like a normal bow so I do have a normal bow here because I realized that the lace detailing did not go nearly high up enough and the shoulders kept on falling off both when I was wearing it and when I would have it on the dress form. So I had to create these two long pieces that were up more that I could then tie so that the dress would be secure. So that's what I did. And um, I do like it. I like the way it looks. It might be the lazy way out, but I don't care because it's also the back of the dress and the back is not what you're looking at. And also, yes, I know. It's very sheer and there's no lining, but that's because I was wearing really dark leggings underneath and I was sitting down the whole time I was wearing the costume handing out candy. I did not want to dedicate the time to make an underskirt, but I probably will do that in the future. So, let's talk about the centerpiece of the dress, which is of course the bat. So years ago while browsing through Etsy I saw this and when I saw it I immediately knew that I wanted to use it for a future project but I didn't know what project that would be until I started making this costume and realized that it was a perfect fit. Now if you see those two uh, silver little buttons there those actually allow the wings of the bat to move. So I'll just show you here. They do in fact move. And what I had originally wanted to do was construct the dress so that whenever I moved the sleeves of the dress upwards the way that Lily does in that iconic reference photo, which uh, should be in the thumbnail of this video, 
Um, I wanted that to trigger the wings on the bat applique to move as well. Now, my idea on how to make this happen was to have a cord attached to the little bat that ran to the sleeves so that it would move it simply whenever I would have movement with my arms. And when I did that, it worked to move the wings upward a little bit, but whenever they would move back down, they would get caught in the lace that makes up the body of the dress, that white lace. Um, so it just didn't really work, and if I'm also being honest, the cord that was connecting the bat to the sleeves looked kind of ugly whenever the sleeves were relaxed and the cord was relaxed. Um, it was just sort of drooping and it did not look right. I did not like it. So I took a seam ripper and I very delicately took it off. Um, so yeah, whenever I do wear it, I will just have to demonstrate the movability of the bat by manually moving it with my hands, which is not as theatrical as what I originally wanted in order to show off that it moves, but that's better than nothing. And I still think that the dress looks incredible the way that it turned out, regardless of that one element not working. So I'm still happy with it. And I hope that anyone watching likes this as well. This is not my first YouTube video, it's actually my second. The first is a funny TikTok compilation, but this is my first legit video in terms of content creation, and so, you know, this Canon camera that I'm using, it's still new to me, all the equipment is still new to me, the editing software is still new to me, so please be nice. <laughs> and also, I'm going through some health stuff that is not completely sorted out, and so that's why I'm not really showing my face and also showing what I made on the dress form and not on myself. Um, I have postponed doing YouTube for a number of reasons for a number of years and I did not want to put it off anymore. I want to be happy and going forward with these projects is going to make me happy. So even though you might not see my face a lot, it's not going to be like that forever. And so I would just like if the audience and anyone who is going to return after this video to just please be respectful that I'm not going to be showing my face too much in the beginning. But as my health improves, and it has been improving and will continue, so I'm confident in that. But as it improves, I will be on camera more. But for now, you'll see me behind the camera, or you'll hear me behind the camera, rather, and you'll see my projects more than me just to start out. And I will get better with the camera, I will get better with the editing, so I would like it if the viewers of this video will return. But if not, thank you for watching this one. For anyone who is coming back, I will see you, or rather, you will hear me next time.